What is up, Mathletes? Welcome back to the episode of Math with Dr. Math. And today, we're going to be talking about how to approximate the mean using grouped data. Don't go anywhere. All right, Mathletes. So here's the big idea. What happens when we don't have the raw data? What are we talking about? The data's undercooked. No, what we're looking at is sometimes the data is already summarized for us. So we might not have all the data values. We might just have it already grouped for us. All right. So how do we approximate the mean? Well, I'm going to be walking through this whole idea with you today. But uh, some of you, you like the step by step process. So what I have for you is if you're a step by step person, go ahead and press pause and I have all the steps that I'm gonna go through today all listed for you. So if you wanna copy these down, that's great, but I'm gonna be walking you through these because if you're anything like me, you need to see it done step by step. Ready? I am, here we go. All right, so here's our first example. Let's go ahead and read this together. So the following table that way we have here, it presents the number of text messages sent via cell phone by a sample of 50 high school students. All right, so we've got these 50 high school students and they're sending messages and we're gonna see how much they're blowing up other people's phones. All right, so what we, our goal here is to approximate the mean number of messages sent. All right, so on our left-hand column here, we have the number of text messages sent right but notice they don't give us every single student they group them all together so they said all right um 10 students sent anywhere between 0 and 49 messages five students sent anywhere between 50 and 99 text messages 13 students sent anywhere between 100 and 149 messages 11 students sent anywhere from 150 to 199 text messages seven students sent anywhere between 200 and 249 text messages and four students should have had their cell phone taken away years ago all right so we have all this information right so first things first if you go and if you're the person that wrote down in your notes the step by step notice what it said the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this list here this column excuse me and we're going to find the midpoint of each one of these rows here so let's go ahead and let's do that find the midpoint excuse me of each one of these cells so let's go ahead and do that all right dr math so how in the heck do i find the class midpoint all right so what we're gonna do, if you're looking at the notes, you take that lower class limit, right? If, say if I want this class midpoint of this class right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lower limit right here, the zero, and I'm gonna add the next lower class limit, right? So I look at this next class and I'm gonna take its lower class limit, which is 50. So I'm gonna take that zero, right? And I'm gonna add 50 to it. And if you're doing this in the calculator, go ahead and press enter, right? Zero plus 50. And then you're taking the average of those two. So we're gonna, of course, divide that by two. So we get 50, right? Cause you add those first and you divide it by two. And so we get our class midpoint of 25. All right, so there's our first class midpoint. Uh, the second one we've already done for you. So let's go and let's do this third one that's missing. So notice, we take this lower class limit, which is 100. So let's write that down, 100. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the next lower class limit right here, which is 150. So let's go ahead and add 150. All right, so we're gonna get 250 because we're gonna add those two first. So again, make sure you write that down in your notes that if you're doing this using your calculator and you're not using the scientific calculator, make sure you put the top, the numerator in parentheses or else it's gonna throw off your answer. And then of course, then we divide it by two. So you're gonna end up with 125. 
So we're gonna end up with 125. And some of you are gonna see there's a pattern, right? So each one of these is gonna go up by 50, which is our class width, right? So the class width, how do you find that? Well, you take one lower class limit and subtract the previous lower class limit. So 100 minus 50 gives us 50. Or you could have taken 250 and subtracted 200, and that would give you 50 again. So it doesn't matter as long as they're consecutive lower class limits. That'll give you the class width. And again, that's a little shortcut in case you wanna do this for every single cell. So once you have that class width, which is 50, how much is it going up by 50? You could just continue to add 50. So 175 plus 50, right? Let's go ahead and we get 225. And we get 225 there. All right, any questions? Yeah, back here. All right, I see your question in the back. So the question in the back, in case you couldn't hear, they're asking, does our upper class limit go up by 50 as well? Well, let's see. 99 minus 49, boom, 50, right? So again, you could see that each one of these upper class limits is also gonna jump up by 50, right? I can't be showing you all my secrets here. All right, let's move forward. So what did we do? We found the class midpoint. Now what? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, according to our notes, is you're gonna take each one of these class midpoints and you're gonna multiply it times the frequency. So you take each midpoint and you multiply it by the frequency. So 25 times 10, we get 250 here, right? And then we're gonna take the 125 times the 13. So let's do that. All right. And then our next one that's missing right here is 225 times seven. So let's do that. And we're gonna get 1575. So again, what did we do? Just to recap, we multiplied every single one of these class midpoints times its frequency. And that's how we got this cell right here. All right, we good? Good. All right, so what's next? you're gonna see this sigma, capital Greek letter sigma here. And what that's gonna tell us to do is, notice I have a parentheses, uh, parentheses here to really focus on, first you're gonna go ahead and do that multiplication that we just did. And then what you're gonna do with each one of those products is you're gonna add them up. And that's what sigma tells us to do. It tells us it's a summation. We're gonna add up all those products and that is step three right there, all right? So again, make sure this makes total sense. All we're doing is after you multiplied, right? We take that column and we're gonna add up every single one of those cells. So take out your calculator and let's do this, all right? So after doing some fast calculations, again, we're just adding up this uh, column right here where we took each one of those midpoints and we multiplied by the frequencies. Right, we got these cells right here, and what we said is we're gonna add up every single one of these, and what we got was 6,850, right? So not only are we gonna add up the, this cell right here, but we also need the total frequency, right? So the frequency here is the total, right? The summation of all the frequencies is 50. So what are we gonna do with these totals? Well, all we do now is divide them. So we're gonna divide that 6,850 by our N value, right? Our sample size, which was 50. So we're gonna go ahead and divide that. Let's do that together. And we end up with 137. So the mean of this sample, right? We could approximate it to 137. And what is it well, that we we're trying to find? we were trying to find the average number of text messages sent, right? So uh, an average of 137 text messages. Boom. And that is how you find the mean of grouped data. All right, folks, so that's what we have for you here at Dr. Math Studios. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share this great content with your friends. We'll see you next time. Peace.